Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and if you've got yourself a i9 processor, whether it's an i9 14900K or a 13900K, and you've been running in your system for a while, but you've been noticing some issues causing your games to crash or getting these out of video memory errors, then you might have seen the guidance and including videos from me on things you can do to change that with downloading the latest BIOS updates or tweaking BIOS settings in order to improve stability. But perhaps you don't want to deal with all of that nonsense and you don't want to have to think about the loss in performance you're going to get by making these changes to your system because you paid a lot of money for the i9 and you just want your system to run well perfectly understandable and messing about in the bars can be pretty intimidating. So one solution is potentially just a downgrade to an i7 14700K, for example. This drop from the i9 to the i7 should see your system becoming more stable. Now, I'm actually going to talk about a few different things to keep in mind here, because I do get asked a lot of questions like whether you need to do a BIOS update or any other changes to Windows or whether you'll need to buy a new Windows license and other things like that. I'm also taking the GPU out of my system here, and you'll see why in a second. But what you'll need to do is obviously unplug your PC and then remove your all-in-one cooler or your CPU cooler and get that out of the way. Then theoretically, it's as simple as lifting the lever and then removing the CPU very carefully from your socket to make sure you don't do any damage. I'd also recommend just having a quick look now to see if you've bent any of the pins. Look from a couple of angles to make sure everything's okay there. Then in theory, all you need to do is to take the i7 out of its box and then put it back in place of the i9. We have a quick look at the i7 because it is gorgeous as a brand new CPU. And then just slot that in carefully and make sure you line up the little notches on the bottom and drop it down carefully into the socket, obviously taking care not to damage those pins. And then just replace the lever, put on some thermal paste and put your system back together, seating the pump back on top and making sure you re-secure it and plug all the cables back in. In theory, that's a pretty simple fix and a downgrade to your system, but one that will help with stability. And it's pretty easy to do. I'll talk a minute about the things you need to do in the BIOS if you're doing this basic upgrade. One thing to think about though, is perhaps while you're here, you might as well make another change to your system and maybe go about improving things even further. But as you can see, Basically, don't forget to put the thumb screws back in place on your AIO. Obviously, you'll need fresh thermal paste, which in itself is beneficial. You'll need to make sure you plug in your CPU cable to the AIO pump header or CPU fan, and then you're away. While you're in the process of doing this, though, you might want to take some time to upgrade your system with a contact frame. So a CPU contact frame, as you can see here from Thermalrite, is essentially just a bracket that you put over your CPU, which prevents bending over time, because this design of CPU being rectangular means that it can get bent over time, which reduces the cooling performance. Now, these are pretty easy to install, although I would recommend leaving the CPU in place and not doing what I'm doing. But essentially, you unscrew the standard brackets that are in place here, as you've seen, that would usually hold it in place and take them out of the way, being careful not to drop anything into the CPU socket, which is why you'd leave the CPU in there normally. I just wanted to make it easy to see what was happening on video. You're taking this out and then we're gonna replace it with a thermal right contact frame. I would say that you do need to remove the whole motherboard from your system when doing this though, because there is a back plate on here. If I take this other motherboard and show you, if you'd remove the bracket, you'll see at the rear, there's actually a bracket which is attached to the rear of the motherboard, which then those screws pass through and hold it in place. And that's how that system works. So if you try and do this while it's in your case, you might find this bracket drops off and then that could potentially cause a problem if it shorts something out or if it just gets lost in the case, it's a lot fiddlier. So you do need to sort of unplug everything, remove all the standoff screws and take your motherboard out in order to do this. But it is worth doing because it could help with performance over time. So once that CPU is in place, you then seat the thermal right contact frame over the top of the CPU and line up the holes with the holes sticking through from that back plate that I just showed you and then replace the standard screws that you had with the bracket that was on the motherboard through the holes into there and then just tighten it up. You just need to tighten each of them up a little bit. Don't try and over tighten them. Be careful when doing it. You'll find you'll just feel the point when it's finished and then it should be done. 
And then obviously we've now got a slightly upgraded system despite dropping the CPU down from an i9 to an i7. And then just obviously go about replacing your motherboard back into your case. Make sure you plug all the cables back in. And if you don't know where things go, I've got a wiring guide in my PC build playlist, which will help you out. But plug everything back in that you removed, then apply some new thermal paste. And I'm using Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut paste here. Apply that to the middle, then give that some good coverage across the CPU. And then we can put the cooler back down over the top. Now, all of this, I've obviously said, is easy to do. I'm assuming that you're using the same motherboard and the same generation of a processor. I've gone from a i9 14900K to an i7 14700K. You could theoretically use an older generation if you wanted to. If you are using LGA 1700 motherboard, a Z790 or a Z690, you could use a 13th, 14th or 12th gen CPU and downgrade. But obviously it makes sense to stick to the same generation. So if you've got an i9 13900K, you could go for an i7 13700K, but theoretically you could go for an i7 14700K, but you might need to do a BIOS update for your system, which is worth bearing in mind. Depending on your motherboard and how new it is, you might need to do a BIOS update first. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But again, replace everything, plug in all the cables, secure your AIO, make sure that's screwed in well, make sure the cables are sorted out there, put your GPU back in place, plug all that in and then theoretically that is basically it that's done as long as you haven't changed the generation of CPU as I said you should find that you can then just plug your system back in and turn it back on and it should boot just fine now you may need to make some changes in the BIOS though so mash the delete key on your keyboard once you've turned it back on and find yourself back in the BIOS what I found here is obviously you can see that i7 is now in there it, it will boot into Windows, but what it's done is it's defaulted the settings. So it needs to turn XMP back on. So I've set mine to Profile 2 to make sure my RAMs are running at maximum speed. Also turning on Gain Boost within the MSI BIOS, which should give a bit of a performance boost as well. And then making sure that's all set up, click that little X, apply the settings, and then reboot again. I'm happy to report the process for me it went really smoothly. It should be relatively easily, but if you have any issues, let me know in the comments down below what your problems are. As I said, I've got wiring guides and other things which will also be useful, and I've got a guide dedicated to CPU upgrades if that's something else you wanted to do. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.